Hello and welcome to today's Your Daily Five. I'm Tom Boley, Chief, Mar Chief Market Strategist of EarningsBeats.com, and I'm happy to join you on this Tuesday, September 15th. Uh, before we get into my five charts, I do have five charts for you. I do want to just point out, if you go over to EarningsBeats.com, you can sign up for our free newsletter, EarningsBeats Digest. Just type in your name, email address, hit that subscribe button. It's a free newsletter, no credit card required. Um, you can unsubscribe at any time. If you'd like to join our service, uh, you can do so either by hitting this green join today button. Uh, there is a, it is a fully refundable $7 uh, 30 day trial uh, where you can check out our service. And we do have an event tonight that's members only. Our Max Payne monthly webinar starts at 4.30 this afternoon. So just after the market closes. Again, if you'd like to join that webinar, you can go uh, through either the link that we provide to sign up for our 30-day trial, or you can go down below and hit that green join today button, but we'd love to have you. All right, let's take a look at what's going on in the market and some of the key charts that I'm watching right now. First of all, I think it's really important to point out that transportation stocks are leading the market. So not only are we seeing a breakout, and we saw this to start September, we saw a breakout above that January 2020 high. So transport's moving to uh, a fresh new high pulled back, tested that rising 20-day moving average, and now we're on the verge of breaking out again. This is really good news for the market. Whenever the transports are pushing to the upside, generally speaking, that means that the market overall is doing pretty well. I mean, it's a common sense thing. Transports, um, you know, they're very economically sensitive. There's no reason that they're going to lead the market unless the market believes that the economy is going to be strong. So there is a nice little channel on this chart. I connected the highs, drug that line down to these lows. And you can see so far, we are holding this channel support perfectly as we attempt to break out. And if we do make this breakout, we have a strong fourth quarter, which I believe we're going to, transport could easily be one of the leaders and start to move up toward the upper end of this channel, which would be significantly higher than current price. The, uh, I just wanted to see or, or have you visualize this relative strength, though, in the transports. Here it is versus the S&P 500. We saw the breakout back in August, and I think actually the last time I was on here doing your daily five, I talked about the transports and the fact that we made this double top relative breakout. But after pulling back for a couple of weeks or just simply going along with the S&P 500, we've made another breakout. This is a relative breakout. Very important because now we're seeing leadership from the transports. If you look at the truckers, very nice uptrend versus the S&P 500. And since I last did this year daily five, railroads have now broken out versus the S&P 500. So really strong action in the transports. Next up, uh, the Dow Industrials. Now, if you're familiar with the Dow theory, you know that we look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average and we look at the Dow Jones Transports. And when one breaks out, it's bullish. But when the other one joins, it's even more bullish. We've got the transports already broken out. The Dow Jones Industrial Average now, at this point, we've got uh, maybe another 1,000 points to go. But if we get that breakout, which I think it's going to happen in the fourth quarter, possibly in this month, but I think it's uh, probably going to be in the fourth quarter, I think when we get that, that will confirm what we're already seeing on the transports. Now, I know there are a lot of folks look at the PPO or the MACD, these momentum indicators, and whenever the uh, line is below that trigger line, they get a little nervous. I don't feel that way as long as we're above zero. Anything above zero means that your short-term moving average is above your long-term moving average. So I believe momentum remains positive, and I think that this cross back to the upside is just a matter of time. All right, let's move on. Chart number three, volatility index. Now, I actually had written in Chart Watchers, uh, in the last Chart Watchers article, and also wrote in my Trading Places blog about sentiment warnings. And the VIX, if you notice here, the VIX at the end of August and into early September was rising. And you, ordinarily, that wouldn't be that big a deal, but it was rising with the S&P 500. Normally, when it rises, see the big rise in the VIX February, March, normally it's a fear gauge. So when the market's selling off, the VIX goes up. Here, when we had the big spike in the VIX, it was when the market was selling off. 
So this was just very unusual because we normally don't see the VIX rising with the market going up. And what that tells us is that the market's growing more fearful, even though prices continue to go higher. Normally, as prices go higher, the market gets complacent, the opposite of fearful. And the best way to visualize this is I actually like to, to look at the correlation between the VIX and the S&P 500. And you can see, first of all, we went positive, had a little bit of positive correlation back at the beginning of May of 2019. That was the trade war. That was another episode of the trade war. And you can see we dropped quickly about 200 points in a month on the S&P 500. The next time was in January. We went positive. Now, it wasn't exactly a, the perfect timing, but you can see the market pulled back, went up one more time, and then we had the pandemic. Here, as we approach September, this was the highest positive correlation in the last five years. I only went back five years. I don't know exactly how far this record goes back, but it's very unusual to see the correlation of the VIX and the S&P 500 getting anywhere close to plus one. As you can see, just over the last two years, we've only had a couple of instances when we've even gone positive. Here we got all the way up to 0 0.75. That is a major warning in my mind, simply because you've got the market growing more fearful as prices are going higher. That will or can lead to some rather abrupt selling. And I, again, I posted this in Chart Watchers. I think it was back on right at the end of August. And then I posted on Trading Places, blog, Trading Places Live blog, um, I think it was on September 3rd, just as we were at the top. So you want to be careful when these sentiment readings begin to um, move in this fashion. And now we're starting to be more normal. We're going back down, moving back into an inverse relationship. But still, this was one of the things that led to the selling in September, in my opinion. Next up, S&P 500. So where are we going to go? What is, what's going on here with the S&P? Well, I believe we're consolidating. I think September uh, historically is not a great month. Um, I also believe that this one, this particular September did not set up very well simply because we're overbought. I do believe we're in a secular bull market. I think prices are going higher. I don't know that we're gonna go higher in September. Um, we could, but I think now is the time to maybe be a little bit more cautious. So if I was in, if I wanted to stay in my stocks on the long side, maybe think about selling calls against those positions. Maybe think about a put on the S&P 500, especially if we start to rise again. Uh, this week, this is a week where we could see a little bit of strength simply because money flows. We normally have money flow coming into the stock market beginning and middle of the month, just from 401ks and things like that. So we could be okay here for the next couple of days, but September 21st to September 27th is the worst, is the third worst week of the year. So we do still have a little bit of rough patch of uh, seasonality that we have to look out for here over the next week or two. And if we do see some weakness, I just kind of drew this. I'm expecting some sort of a um, consolidation pattern, continuation pattern type breakout. And so what we could see is a little bit of rally. We got to get through uh, gap resistance at 3426. If we can't negotiate that, I fully expect we're going to come back down, maybe print a new low. And that's where I'd look for maybe something like a bullish wedge. And then as we end September, maybe into the uh, October, I think as earnings season nears, we're going to get another rally. Uh, next up, biotechs. So if we rally, what do I like? Well, one of my favorite groups is biotechs. They have been very frustrating. I can tell you I own, I've owned some of them. I still own the IBB, uh, but I really like this group. We had four years of consolidation after a huge run-up from 2012 through 2015. You can see roughly equal highs, rising lows. That's an ascending triangle. We broke out during the pandemic and hit that, you know, went above that 2200 level, got to 26, pulled back. The measurement is from 2200 down to 1500. And that's 700 points. I think we're going to run to 2900. That's my initial target on the biotechs. And currently we are sitting at 2388. Also relative strength, which was weak during the period of consolidation. We broke that downtrend, pulled back, but now we're starting to turn higher again. I think this is an opportunity for biotechs. 
All right, it was a pleasure joining you today on your daily five. Please remember to go to earningsbeats.com, sign up for that fully refundable $7.30 day trial, and join me later today at 4.30 p.m. for our September Max Payne event. Thanks again. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.